So it's been about two weeks since my last video. You may be wondering, what have I been up to? The answer, of course, Skyrim. I've been fighting dragons, meeting some nice magical doggo familiars, becoming the Jarl's closest ally, teaching some hot yoga, working on becoming a dental assistant, saving couriers from the belly of the beast, learning about child discipline, new ways to use chairs, burial rituals for pets practiced in smaller villages, being challenged to dance-offs by werewolves. I have interrupted Skinny Dippers, who I don't think were very happy about my presence there. I met a man with the biggest wood I've ever seen. I've been ogling some chests, and of course making some friends in high places. I've also been working on a Besiege project. <laughs> But I don't think that's ready yet. So what am I here to talk about today? Today is kind of a retrospective for the end of the year. Um, I don't really have much of a plan other than to show you... Basically, I'm going to be talking about depth and composition and how I've been trying to work on that lately. Um, and then compare to some of my older pictures. <sighs> So I recently made one of those rare and cherished moments as an artist where something finally clicks into place and suddenly the world makes just a little bit more sense. Uh, I used to get them a lot more often when I sketched a lot more, and surprise, surprise, I have started getting them again. Now that I am starting to sketch more. Weird coincidence. So I have struggled since the very earliest days with making backgrounds, more specifically with depth and perspective and composition of a piece that comes with it. Most of my backgrounds were sketchy, uh, really awful, and really they didn't think about a piece from the backwards, from the back to the front. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to make a wipe joke, but I just, yeah, they weren't very good. They were not very well thought out. Also, just a reminder, you guys should definitely ditch line paper if you are drawing as soon as possible, and if you don't have an access to a sketchbook yet, Get some copy paper. I have in the past spent time removing lines using like Photoshop and stuff. It's not fun. Just save yourself the hassle and get some line paper. Even if you don't think your drawings are that great, trust me, you're gonna think yourself because it's nice to save the stuff that you've done. Um, yeah, so that's my little note about that. So it all boils down to just all of these pictures are terrible. I I'm not particularly proud of them, even if I'm, I like some of the concepts I'm, I was trying to think of at the time. Oh, goodness, that woman. Um, this is what I thought was cool back then, you know? Grim Reaper with uh, two sides. Because, you know, it's cooler than one side to two sides. Anyway, this is the piece that I was most proud of in 2006, so ten years ago. Um, this is one of the only times where I try to, like, finish and fully, like, do my best to finish a piece. Uh, the two figures are on the same level. The depth, the background is... It's similar to the thing I talked about before. It's like the sticker effect where... But at least they, they look like... I don't know. They really painted the same. There wasn't two separate f layers or anything like that. I actually used, like, Corel Painter back in... At, when I was first learning digital art. Like, this is one of the first digital paintings I ever did back before that computer like destroyed itself basically and I lost a lot of stuff from it which is very sad for me <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure no one else was you know clamoring for any of the stuff that I made back then in fact I, I know for a fact that many people hated some of the stuff I was making which is fine um I, I hate some of the stuff I'm still making so it's fine uh, also, in Corel Painter, I put like a texture, like a stone texture over top of it to make it look old, but now it just looks like I, it looks smeared with something, and now it's, it, ugh, it's awful. I, a lot of cringing on this end. <sighs> Live and learn. Here is something I made in 2009. Uh, it's actually the only example of anything with, with a background at all. I did nothing with a background in those three years between. I actually had a really big problem with backgrounds. The mountains on this one are supposed to feel too 
feel far off, but they feel really close because of those black lines. Also, I probably did this in like five minutes because it definitely looks like I only did it in five minutes. So I think I was just at the time I just I was like I need to do landscapes because that's that's what artists do. They make landscapes, and I was just like maybe this will something for my background, but I just did it, and I was like, there, I did it. I made art. That's how you do art. You just make things. You don't look at them. And now I'm analyzing it, which is a process that I'm still new to. I should have also probably done multiple different ones. Um, yeah. Uh, so, in my junior year of high school, I was terrified of making backgrounds. I don't know if I was terrified or lazy. I don't remember. Um, either way, I just didn't do a lot of backgrounds. And that even included when it was detrimental to my final grade. Um, here, my teacher said that this was a very nice pencil drawing of a dragon slash serpent. But the background is needed to really finish this drawing off. Even though she said that you know the details of the face and the eye were well done. Uh, a lot of my marks were in the average category, which is very was very uncharacteristic of my grades in that class. Um, here's another thing. I don't have the picture, but I do have the thing. But it was just another art piece, which didn't have a background. And she told me that this was a great piece of work, and that she liked my colors, and my blend was good. I think it was a colored pencil. But she would have liked to see a background of sorts to really finish my piece off. So I got marked down again for not having a background, or even... And by that, I think even just, like, there was no composition, really. It was just a piece of something that I put together. Especially this... The sea dragon one, I know I slapped that thing together. I did that in one night because I was being lazy again, and I just hadn't even started on this art piece that was supposed to be due the next day, and so I worked on it for, I think, like an hour or two. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah. So the next thing that I tried to do with a background was in my first year of college. Um, I'm s looking at this, I realize just how far behind I really was as far as doing and making images. I had focused too much on just sketching and drawing random stuff in my sketchbook and just not, not taking the time to really learn basics or even look at how to do anything. Uh, I was way... I was such a cocky little, little asshole and I, I'm not proud of myself. Um, I used, this was a piece that was supposed to be James Jean inspired, um, and looking at it now, James Jean would, would hate me if he, if he knew that this was supposed to be in his style. Um, the only thing I was saying was that it was a very surreal subject matter, and the color choices were kind of influenced, though his are actually a lot more muted. I really love James Jean, and I am embarrassed by this. I like, I like the, I spent a long time on the face and the head, but those black lines, now I, I should probably, I should probably redo this at some point. I might do that actually for the final, the final study of what this is all about, which is the depth and perspective thing. Um, in composition, I might try to try a different composition. Um, so after I left college, um, have I was doing composition tests, because I, I really, I was just like, I don't know how to do these things, I don't know how composition works, I don't know how to make an image interesting, and I was really, this was at the start of me coming out of my slump. I had not done anything in a very long time, not really at least, not like a real piece of art, nothing I was happy about, nothing I was proud of. Um, these kind of turned out okay. I made them very simplistic. Um, some basic stuff was learned here, basically that things get lighter in the background and that it's nice to have something to actually look at as the subject. But yeah, it was it was an interesting study, just quickly put together. Um, here, this is, I think, like, this was two or, this was 2014, I think, or no, I think it was early, of, early 2015. Um, I was trying to do depth, I was trying to learn composition as well. 
and I took this this screenshot from Minecraft, which I was super obsessed with, and will probably be obsessed with soon again. I'm sure. I I go I go with Minecraft in phases. Um, and yeah, I, I took it and I kind of did a quick study and I kind of messed with it a little bit and well, a lot of it. And I didn't. I still didn't have like a like a process by which I painted stuff. I used my paint here. Um, it's okay. I I like it. It would be better as a thumbnail instead of. If it's this big, it, it's actually quite a large file on my computer. Um, I didn't really have any idea. I'm actually still learning about like dimensions and how to make an image look good. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This was an interesting developmental step. Um, here is basically the same process. Um, I took this screenshot here from Minecraft and I tried to use it to create a more realistic environment. Uh, it's not really that realistic. It's actually really muddy, but it looks sort of three-dimensional. Um, I think I captured some of the depth from the source image, and I think it looks pretty okay. Again, obviously it looks okay for not being good. Um, what I mean by okay is just that, like, it looks, it looked good to me at the time, and I think that it was a good stepping stone once again. Um, here is another one. This time I just drew it from imagination. I tried to do just this hallway, I guess. And I, the lighting on that that statue, monk, that monk statue, which is what it's supposed to be, is really bad. And also, I didn't really look at since it's from imagination. Like I didn't plan it at all. Um, so considering that, I'm surprised that I put a shadow on the back wall. Um, but the lighting on the statue looks bad. It doesn't look like it's coming from that light. It looks like it is just painted funny on the front. I don't know. Here is... I was watching... I don't know what the YouTuber is, but he, he like, helps improve... He was talking about composition again. It was, like, an improvement of art. It was just, like, composition of pieces. And he... It was the first time that I realized that things in, in grayscale can be turned into things of color. Um, it was a first attempt. Uh, I kind of, I like some of it. I was also starting to learn that you could change the saturation of certain spots to make and an like increase saturation in some places to draw focus and then decrease saturation in other places to not be as faint. And I did that by like making the background desaturated and the fire and some of the light lighting be very very saturated compared to some of the others in the image. Um, it doesn't look great. It actually looks kind of whatever, but the basic lesson I learned from this was that the values are what sell a form. Um, it's not color, because it doesn't matter what color you put over top of a value. As long as the values are strong and it reads from a distance, then the image will look good no matter what colors, usually what colors put you put on top of it. Anyway, moving on. So, this year, I, I actually it was about I guess seven months ago. I wa I saw this post on Reddit, and it was about this guy's. It's this guy named Andrew Price, and he made this post on Reddit called Six Months Learning to Draw." And this guy spent six months, and he learned how to draw. Basically, he just got he got better, and he. I looking at his art, I just it made me sad that. I just hadn't put in the effort to work on this thing that I loved, that I have spent money on trying to get better at, and I I liked his that he had a style, and I feel like I still don't. His art is fun, and I just it looks like he had fun making the the pictures, and I just I want that at some point, and I don't know, I'm just. I, I'm lost. But one of the things, one of the resources he recommended was, first off, Proko, which is a wonderful YouTube channel, and I need to keep going. I need to go back and watch some more of his videos. Um, but also, he recommended this book about color, which is something like everything when it comes to visual stuff, apparently. I, I just struggle. Um, I struggle a lot. I have... I feel... I have lost my once natural affinity for these things. Um, but there's this book called Color and Light by James Gurney, who is most famous for creating the Dinotopia uh, series of 
I, I guess they are like films. Um, and his artwork is amazing, first off. But he does a very good job of explaining how light changes color and how colors can make you view other colors as different colors than what they truly are. I don't know. It's a very good book. Um, in the in the in the words of Andrew Price, it is the best explanation on understanding light that he has ever seen. I really enjoyed it. Um, I read the whole thing, and I love tests to try to practice what I learned. Um, I should probably actually go back and look at that again. It's hard to transfer some of the stuff that he's talking about into digital concepts, but it's still helpful and a very good book. Um, it's not too boring. I didn't feel like I was being, you know, I didn't feel like I was slogging thing. It was actually very fascinating, and he describes it in such a very, in a very concise and interesting manner. Um, I actually learned a lot about how pigments were made. Anyway, um, so after that was done, here is actually one of the tests I did. Um, I think I was just trying to make shadow and make sure that the top... Oh, I was trying to reflect orange from the ground on the inside panels. Also, I don't know what kind of a shed this is supposed to be. That would never exist in real life. But um, I was just trying to do shade, shadow, how light would work on this three-dimensional object that I tried to create. It was still not very good. Um, yeah. I also, after this, I started watching... Bob Ross was put onto Netflix, and me and my girlfriend started to watch it, um, and it made me want to draw landscapes again, which, I mean, we've seen that other time that I wanted to do landscapes, and I did one, and I was just like, eh, it's done. Um, and so here's me trying to recreate the Bob Ross technique unsuccessfully, first off. I will immediately say that it's very unsuccessful. Um, I did this on my iPad. Um, it's okay. Uh, um, I had fun doing them, but I would not consider this, like, an art piece of any kind. Uh, here's another one, just a nighttime scene. I like this one a little bit better. I also am not proficient with my finger, but I think for using just my finger, I think it's pretty good. Um, here is another one. Uh, here's me using my tablet. I don't even really doing this. Um, yeah, I can't. I just must have made this in a quick hour or something at some point. I don't even remember when. Um, here's one that I made using, it's called Verve Painter, and um, I liked it a lot. I like it a lot, actually, still. Um, I did some post-color changing using uh, Paint.net, but overall, I enjoy a lot of it. kind of looks like an actual mountain. Maybe it does. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, here's another one, which is more just a, a kind of a mess. I did this one with also, 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 Verb Painter. It is not the best, again. I know I keep saying that. I, I like this. There's a little bit with um, some light. I don't know what that light's coming from, though, so that makes it not that interesting. Also, I didn't, apparently I didn't know if it was going to be a sunny, nice day out or a nice cloudy doom. I mean, I have the volcano going off, and I think I used my, my mouse, and that was about it for this, so. I think it's pretty, it's, it's, I need to stop making excuses. It's not very good. It's okay. <laughs> um, then I started watching, I watched, Uncom I started getting into this guy, um, Uncomfortable. He has his own subreddit entirely. It's called Drawing Basics or Drawing Fundamentals. I don't know, these will be in the links below, but, um, he, his main philosophy is draw a box, like, 500 times or something like that, and you'll get better, um, which I understand. Uh, it might sound crazy, but link it up. Uh, his YouTube channel is Uncomfortable, and he, like, that, no, that is the name of his YouTube channel is Uncomfortable. And he has some, some, uh, videos on composition, and I started watching those, and I did some of these tests very similar to the other tests of composition that I did. Um, I jumped into this not knowing what I was drawing, and I didn't make these compositions for any reason, which is a hard thing to do in... It's one of those things that, like, the best way to learn something is to have an actual reason to be learning something, or be trying to solve a problem, and I never have any visual problems I'm trying to solve. And so a lot of my art falls just because I'm not solving anything and I'm not driven to finish anything. And so I need to start working on that. That is another goal of mine, is to start thinking up visual problems. 
Um, here is one of the composition things that I ended up doing, but again, it's from Imagination, and I just started doing it. I didn't have an idea when I started, and it's supposed to be this, like, monster demon guy in this flooded underneath up here kind of thing. Um, it's not too interesting. I don't really like the design, but it was a, another stepping stone. Not a good stepping stone, but it was something anyway. Um, here is, I like this one the most. Um, it's not inspired by Attack on Titan. I'm now looking at it, and it kind of does look like it is. Um, so I guess maybe it is. I don't know. Subconscious. I like this one a lot. I think I did okay. It's supposed to be this giant guy looking in. You've got these, got these people and these. Um, it's actually one of the few times I've done like an up, like a different angle that's not like totally flat. Uh, looks pretty good. I actually like that one a lot. I, I spent a lot of time on it trying to make it look good. I don't think the lighting exactly is right on the form, but it's okay. Or it's not okay, but it's something. Um, skip a couple more months, and I found this not another... It was this guy, and he used in The Incredibles, the movie The Incredibles, by director Brad Bird. And he talks about how that movie has a very good sense of composition and, um, like, line of actions a lot of the time. I mean, it's kind of a superhero movie, so that makes sense. Um, and I took this image and I saved it because I had never learned about the thirds. And, again, I am just so far behind on things visual, especially understanding them. Like, I might have heard of the rule of thirds. I definitely have heard of the rule of thirds, like, a thousand times. Um, but th this website, which again is in the link, links below, um, it was, <sighs> my brain, I love it when it clicks, things click into place. And this was one of those times where something clicked into place, and so I started messing with it. Um, here's the first test of this, and I did this, and it's supposed to be some kind of glowing tree, I think is what I was going for, and then the shadowy figure in the background walking towards the camera. Um, and then this one is recognizable as the second drawing I did, um, where I was, I definitely laid over this, and yeah, I think in the video you me use the, that Incredibles image um, to try and line up and make some, draw some attention with the eyes to those spots where the lines converge. Um, next, I started realizing that from, from the waves, I did the waves with a kind of grid pattern. I remember that just because it now, looking at it, I can tell that the wave, the water, what's well, supposed to be water at least, just looks like almost like a ugly polisher kind of. Um, anyway, I started realizing that I needed my I realized that I needed to make my characters take up space, and so I tried to do this technique where I made a, I don't know what, I think in Photoshop there's a thing where you can make a grid, and I took, like, print screen to the grid, and then I just drew over top trying to make it, make foreshortening make more sense to me, because again, I just... I make such flat things, and I've practiced flat characters so much that now I am so wrong. Like, my art is so bad, um, by comparison. Anyway, so I did that, and then I haven't really done much with, like, design or depth. I've been, I did those, that, that series of trying to relearn how to paint, trying to make a process for just learning how to paint, not trying to paint anything with depth. However, the skull definitely showed me that I was still not good with depth. That skull definitely showed me, and my, my and I definitely have difficulty with the female torso uh, painting. And that's another one that I had a lot of difficulty with depth. Also, the subject was kind of bland. Anyway, so... This Halloween, I think it was the 28th, um, this month, uh, Istabrick is a YouTuber who I follow and watch some of her videos sometimes. Um, this month, or the, not, excuse me, October, she had this, she had this contest for designing a creepy creature. There was no, like, prize or anything, but it was just kind of a learning experience and a portfolio builder, um, and I casually joined as part of it. Um, I did not actually enter. I'm not actually part of the group. Um, I'm, you know, just kind of doing stuff on my own. And I did this design while watching the um, results of that contest. By the way, some of those designs were really interesting and very imaginative. 
Um, and here is the one that I really unsettled me. And I think that was the point. That's not the point of this video, though. Um, during the video, she talked about making this, um, putting an X, putting an X down and then drawing a line straight up from the where those two X, the X lines, they cross over, and how that is faster than using this thing that I did, which was the grid, and that the X, like the Y, X, what is it? Z, X, and Y axis, just making those, will automatically give you a sense of three-dimensional space and help trick your mind into thinking in 3D on that 2D surface, which is something that I have trouble with a lot. Um, I see that flat 2D piece of paper and I, my, my brain not very good, or wasn't very good, or yeah, was very bad at um, thinking in three dimensions. And that trick, as soon as I started doing it, this is one of the uh, early results before I started actually doing it, but I watched that video and it was like a switch. Again, I had a lot of um, Eureka moments, I guess, this year, which is good, which is good, which is good. Um, Anyway, here is what I ended up doing. I was trying to turn this in 3D space. It doesn't really look all that turned, but it is turned. And I used a photo reference. I used a picture of my hand um, that I just took a picture with my iPad. And then I made it the opacity lower, and I drew over top of it. And that's, that was the result. Um, I think that looks very creepy. I would not want to walk among... I wouldn't want to see that in some sort of dark alley and have that like, towards me. I don't know what it is about it, but it freaks me out. It might not freak you out, but it freaks me out. Um, here is some of the first times that I used the X to try and draw stuff. Um, I was watching District 9 at the time, one of my favorite movies, and doing my Fukin, Fukin prawns there. Um, and then down here, I was trying to do a character, the character being uh, a robotic gem peddler. And the robotic gem peddler, I was trying to give him something interesting in the background, something to do. And uh, I ran into a composition slash background problem. Um, this problem that I've always had. I don't know why. And then on the back of that page, I just drew a hallway, like a box. Um, and then I kept drawing and kept drawing and trying to expand it and make it more interesting and trying to explain what kind of an environment it was. And this was the biggest moment of this year for me as far as being an artist, as far as pretending to be an artist. I don't know what I am. I'm just a guy with a pen. And I drew this and I really liked it. I actually feel like it was uh, developed. It may not have been thought through from the beginning, and it, but I mean, for from my imagination, I'm very, this is very impressive for me, and um, that's all I can compare myself to is, you know, just me. I can't compare myself to those other wonderkins, you know. I, I'm not one of them. <laughs> I'm gonna, I feel like I'm probably going to have to struggle with a lot of this stuff and keep my head level and just keep working on this. The X discussion that Istabrick brought up, I realized I could make one of those in Besiege, my favorite game. <laughs> Um, and I could use that as a tool, a three-dimensional tool, that I could um, spin the camera around and take a screenshot of that and then just use that as the basis. Um, but then I also tried to design, like, a creature or something around the X, and that, it was time-consuming, and I really couldn't make heads or tails of it. Unfortunately, Besiege does have its limitations. Um, but I like the idea. I, I mean... As you saw with the Minecraft stuff, I really like using video games to try and inspire and sometimes use as a resource because I don't have all many resources, so it forces me to become creative. However, I don't know if my creativity is probably detrimental to my art. I don't know. So here is that that X. I took a picture, print screened it, and then I made the X with the with Paint.net, and then I made all these lines based on that that X, and I used that to draw draw these two um, things, and I really like them. They feel three-dimensional. Um, I feel like I'm actually making something, and I, again, I didn't know what I was drawing. That top one is just supposed to be some sort of energy harvester, and the bottom one is supposed to be... There's another creepy character design that I had, which was basically like a... supposed to be like a walking, a walking stick, but it has like this jellyfish, like these bioluminescent jellyfish tendrils coming out the bottom of it. Didn't work out entirely, but I still, I like these two designs. They feel three-dimensional, which was the main point exercise. Here's another iPad drawing that I tried to use, tried to do both composition 
and depth. Um, we were just saving this princess in a jail cell. The princess ended up being evil, but we didn't know that at the time. So I eventually, once I found out she was evil, I put these little, these little orange red eyes, glowing red eyes. Yeah. And um, so finally, or not finally, but on to the final phase of this video. Uh, so I'm a big fan of movies, and I started realizing that what I was trying to practice was composition and depth, which some of my favorite movies do a very good job of cinematography, which is the control of camera through a scene and like designing how to do that and make it look visually interesting which is both a which is which a cinematographer must have very good good uh, sense of depth and definitely of, of uh, composition I don't know why the words are escaping me and so I started doing that I, I started watching movies and then trying to sketch them sketch a scene like a quick frame um, I took maybe at most 30 seconds on each of these probably 15 though if i could um i just started looking at what made a, a image interesting um here's the first one and then here's the second one uh second page and i just started drawing a bunch of stuff and sometimes i would play around with the image and add some words and i, I don't know what i was doing but uh this was birdman birdman which i enjoyed thoroughly um and then i started watching the original star wars a new hope um and I really liked. They did a lot of cool stuff with Vader. Um, the scenes, like the, the the sets, never looked like huge, but they always did a good job of framing it so that the characters were never were never cramped. Despite the like, I don't know. They did a good job of you depth and composition to their advantage. Um, George Lucas did a very good job on that. Um, and then I was looking at this and I was looking at like Darth Vader and the way they put him on screen. And especially the shot where he first arrives in Yavin, in the, not Yavin 4, in the Tantive 4, and, um, which is the rebel ship, which is Leia's ship. Um, and it, I wrote this down, but here is, I wrote something I want to step into rather than something invading my space and thus breaking the illusion. And I feel like that is a very good way that you know when a 3D movie is good and not bad. Um, when a 3D movie is good, it makes you, it makes it look like an extension backwards into the screen like it looks like a real place that you could actually step up from your seat and walk up to the screen and step into and when it's bad is when it breaks the fourth wall literally and it makes you it breaks your 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 disbelief uh gets totally broken and um the illusion gets broken when they do those things where like it pops right out at you, and I think that that is what kills 3D movies. Um, I haven't seen a 3D movie in a really long time. Uh, the Avengers did a very good job of 3D as well, um, just because it made that movie... That, I think that's the last movie I saw in 3D. Maybe not. Probably. Definitely probably not. But, I mean, it was just... It made that movie so much better um, because it looked like a real world, and those shots where Iron Man was flying through, they were so cool, um, flying through the city. And, and, and in the movie that people loved, that is James Cameron's Avatar, which was the big return to 3D. Um, people really don't like that movie, which is fine. Like, if you don't like the movie, that's okay. The story is Pocahontas in space, where everyone says. Totally fine, I understand, but look at the sense of composition. Um, that, I mean, it's it's densely packed, yes, but it's not just densely packed, it's well arranged, and I feel, and in three dimension, like in 3D, goodness gracious, in 3D, it was very interesting to look in on this. Um, the biggest selling scene to me was when they first arrived on Pandora and he was getting out of his little birth chamber thing and he the 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 set just goes on and on backwards and when I was watching that movie for the first time this scene was the scene that I thought of the most when I was in theater too it's just so it was so I I almost felt I felt like I was going to fall in like I, I thought I was going to fall into the movie, and they did such a very, such a good job um, making this movie feel like an extension of the of their world, and it felt extended and big, and it didn't feel it didn't feel cramped, tiny, flat, two dimensional. 
and it felt like a real world that could exist or would exist. Moving on, uh, I moved on to the second original trilogy movie, Empire Strikes Back. Um, and so this is me sketching some of my favorite Hoth stuff, like the trenches and in the interior of the um, Hoth rebel base, as well as the giant ion cannon that shoots past so that they can run the run the M M Imperial blockade. Um, here is another one, and this is just of Luke leaving Hoth, as well as the AT-ATs, which I love AT-ATs attacking and stuff. So using this as a guide, I started doing dimensions, trying to figure out exactly what the letterbox size was to make that made things look cinematic, you know? Because um, putting black bars over an image, it makes things, it really does make things look more um, designed, more thoughtful, more planned out, even if it even if it wasn't. Um, and so I started testing what the size of that was, and it ended up being whatever it was. I I started doing different scales of the same numbers though, and it ended up being for my sketchbook I could fit a nine, I think nine inches by three point eight is one of the possible things and so I just started sketching this from um, imagination and I ended up really I really like this this piece um, it's supposed to be a, a a statue leg by the way and then he's just standing in front of some sort of pool of water and the room is just really big and I just it's one of the first times I mean it's super super simple sketch I'm not saying this is completed I'm not saying this is even a work in progress it was just a thing that I did and I like it um, it's another another practice piece really um, Here's another piece, me just trying to figure out three dimension, how to figure out depth, trying to figure out composition as well. Um, yeah. Um, so then I think the next day I I had made a digital file with four different thumbnail sized versions of like the typical letterbox size, and I started sketching in it using Krita. Krita, which is like the Photoshop alternative, which for some reason my computer has issues with. My, or my tablet has a lot of issues with. But anyway, that's another thing. And I did four, but the one of them was not very, not good at all. Um, it was the one I did at first, and I just didn't end up liking it. But this was supposed to be some sort of like desert. Um, this one was supposed. To, I had been watching a lot of West Westworld, and this is one of the ones that was inspired heavily by the Utah sky and landscapes from the from the show Westworld. I've seen the movie recently too, but this is based on the show. Um, here is was supposed to be some sort of alien, um, kind of foreign alien, um, broken landscape. I really like this one, how it ended up. Um, it's not perfect. I, I like it, though. It's, I mean, that's par for the course. So anyway, that's basically it. Um, use an X. That will take that little X will take you far. Um, I've been studying movies, which are prime examples of you know, depth and cinematography and uh, and um, stuff and uh, yeah I don't know how to end this video um, rule of thirds just a lot of things this year has been and many years before this I mean this is a problem going on 10 years so I hope you enjoyed this I don't know how long this will end up being but yeah have a really good day um, and thank you for watching